Hi everyone, my name is Isabella Sislowati. I'm an excellent Barbie enthusiast with decades of business experience. In this video, I want to show you how we can build this beautiful dashboard showing top 10 best-selling products, including 2023 versus 2022 ranking. The table on the left show ranking for 2023, rank number 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. until number 10, so that we can then see which product is the number one best-selling product, which in this case is product G followed by product J. In the next column, we can then see the movement in ranking in 2023 versus 2022. So in this instance, there is an improvement. In 2022, the ranking was number 10, and then this year, it is now number one, so it has climbed up the ranking by nine spots. And for sense checking purpose, I've also included total units sold in 2022 as well as 2023 and the year on year movement. This is so that we can sense check. For example, in 2023, this item product G is rank number one. And that's because if you look at 2023 columns, it is the best selling product. It has sold 397 total product. Whereas the number 10, for example, only sold 188,000. How cool is this table? Are you liking this? And what's also really cool is we have slicer and we can slice by location and all the product ranking is updated. We can slice by month. January, February, etc. And the table is also updated. I'm going to clear that for now. In addition to the table, I have also included a chart in here, a simple chart to quickly allow us to visualize which product has improved its ranking. When they're improving, it's highlighted in green bar chart over here. And when the ranking has come down over the years, it's highlighted in the red bar chart. This way we can quickly see which product has improved its ranking and which product has gone backwards. This is similar to this column, but it's being charted so that you can quickly see and visualize which product has deteriorated the most versus which product that has improved the most. In this instance, product G has improved the most and product E has gone backwards by eight spot. Yes. And this is consistent with the information in the table over here. It says product E has gone backwards by eight spots and look at the total sales. It's also has gone down. Yeah, sales has gone down. It used to be 430,000 that we sold. And now this year it's only 246,000. Now, in addition to this, we also have top 10 best selling product by month. This way, then we can see the evolution. Is the number one selling product in March consistently the number one selling product every single month? As you can see, it's not. The number one selling product in March is product B. But the month before that, it was not product B. It was product J. And look at product B in the month of February. It was actually rank number nine. Hmm, isn't that interesting? I love this beautiful ribbon chart. So how to recreate this chart? First, let's look at our data model. We have very simple data model, just one table, the fact table called actuals and a date table. And let me just show you what's inside the actual tables. We have a column, a field for products, a field for quantity sold, and then date and location. So really simple. And then in the dates, again, really simple, just date, month, and year. Here are the six steps required to recreate the report. Step one is to set up the data model. Just follow what I have done earlier as an example, or you can use your own model. Step two is to set up our measures. We need one for total quantity sold, one for ranking. Once we have done both, test them. And then step three, modify the filter context so that we can have additional measures for ranking 2023 and 2022 and the difference, as well as total units sold in 2023, 2022 and the difference. 
Once we have completed the creation of all the meshes, we should then apply them to create our visualizations. We will need three visualizations plus two slices. And then step five is to apply conditional formatting for ranking 2023 versus 2022 difference in our table, as well as apply conditional formatting for our bar chart. Let me show you the measures that I have created in this report. The first one is total sold, which is just the sum of quantity sold. The next measure that we need to create is ranking. Let me show you my DAX. To rank unit sold, we need to use rank X. The standard rank X is just this section, the middle section over here. I have supplemented that with an additional if statement that says if in scope, then rank, if not, do nothing. This is so that my ranking is only applied in this table for items with products and not the subtotal or the total at the bottom. If you don't have the in scope statement, then you will have ranking one over here in the total statement. And I don't want that, which is why I've opted to include this statement. And then with rank X, one thing to watch out is this. Make sure you use all open bracket and then enter the columns that you want to rank your unit by. So for example, I want to rank my unit sold by products. So in here, we need to enter actuals product, which is the column for product. A common mistake is for people to use values instead of all. If you use values, then your ranking will be all one. So make sure you don't do that. And then the next input is what we want to rank, which in this instance is our total unit sold, total quantity sold. And then the next criteria, just leave it blank because we don't want to exclude anything. The next criteria is the ranking, just apply descending. And then lastly, the last input is dense, or you can put skip. This is just to deal with situation whereby you have the same quantities for different products. It is very important to test the measure that we have just created. So just click a table and then put your products in there and then put our ranking and then put unit salt. Yeah. So we can just check if the ranking is good. It means that number one ranking has the most product salt, which is what we are seeing in here. So we are quite comfortable that we have done the right thing. Next, let's modify the filter context of quantity sold and ranking so that we can create additional measures. To create ranking for year 2022, I have included the previous ranking in here and I have wrapped it around calculate and then I added a year filter 2022. And then the same thing for ranking 2023, exactly the same as before, put the ranking inside calculate and then add year 2023. Once we have done that, then the next DAX, which is the difference between 2022 and 2023 is just one minus the other. And we do the same with unit salt. We wrap the previous unit salt inside the calculate and then add year 2022. And then for 2023, do the same thing, but add 2023 filter, and then for the difference, do the same thing. Let's recreate from scratch, click table, drag to the top, and then find all the things that we need. We want ranking 2023. We want products. We want ranking. 2023 versus 2022. And then we want total salt, 2022 and 23 and the difference. And almost done. The next bit that we need to do is let's just resize so you can see everything together. Nice. Next, we need title. Let's turn it on and let's call it top 10 best selling product ranking. We're done. Oops, just realized 
that doesn't look very pretty and we are missing ranking for 2022 okay now our table is more complete last cosmetic bit is let's center that so that it's not crooked so what you can do is you can go to specific columns and then just change that alignment to the middle yeah so for ranking 2022 make that in the middle and then for ranking 2023 and 22 all should be in the middle and then for column header let's also change the alignment make it nice and neat all done now next let's create our stack column chart and we want to enter product and put that into x-axis and then we want the ranking and we want to put that into y-axis and then after that we want ranking 2023 in the tooltip as well as 2022 in the tooltip okay so that when we hover we can see that next let's modify the chart so that we can see the data labels okay wonderful we don't really need this y-axis so let's clean it up a little bit remove the title and turn it off so that it's cleaner and then the same with x-axis the title product that's unnecessary because it's already understood now the only thing missing is just the conditional formatting which we will do later next let's create our ribbon chart and we need date and then we want total sold in the y-axis and then we want product in the legend voila oh how cool is that let's drill down more look at that how pretty now we can see how things have evolved over time now what are we missing oh we are missing slices so let's add a couple of slicers on top we want slicer for location yeah. and let's change that into drop down box nice look at that yeah and then one more for month okay nice one last thing let's remove the month click the chart and then go to x-axis and turn off the title okay neater let's tidy up the title and call it year on year movement in product ranking and then for this let's call it top 10 best-selling products nice two more things left to do fix up the conditional formatting over here as well as the conditional formatting on our chart let's work on the table first we want to recreate this ranking with conditional formatting something green when it's good and something red when it's not so good let's do that so click our table and go to visualization pane and right click ranking 2023 versus 2022 click conditional formatting and click icon and this window will pop up we're going to modify this we're going to say we need to format the style using a role the field that's correct ranking 2023 versus 2022 but the rules we're going to change okay so this is what we're going to do we're going to only need to red and green okay and for the first one it's going to be bad if the number is less than zero so we are going to make that number instead of percent and we're going to say if it's less than zero and greater than maybe minus 100 
we will not have anything more than 10 or minus 10. So we want it to be bad. And when it's bad, let's select that. And when it is greater than zero, and less than 100, which is a number, then we want it to be a green dot with ticks. Where are you? This one. And then hit OK. And voila, all done. Now, it doesn't assign anything for zero because it's neutral and I'm fine with that. Next, let's apply conditional formatting to our bar chart. So go to visualization pane, format your visuals, and then go to your columns. And then in here, click the FX. And this window come up and we need to modify this. Rules is correct. And instead of based on first product, we're going to just say based on ranking 2023 versus 2022. And let's write some rules. If the value is greater than one, which is a number, and less than 100, okay, we're going to say the color is green because a ranking improvement is good. Yeah. And let's add new rules. And we say if the number is less than one, i.e. the ranking is deteriorating year on year and greater than minus 100 then the color should be red and we're going to hit OK and look at that very nice all done let's test our report oh beautiful nice 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 look at that oh very good Hope you enjoy this video guys, see you next time.